All right, thank you, Terry. Uh, good morning. So my talk today will focus, as uh, Terry mentioned, on pharmacogenomics at the NIH. Uh, of course, as you can imagine from this title, it's not an easy task to be accomplished in 20 minutes. So I really encourage you to look at two of the uh, resources that were sent to you, background materials uh, that were sent to you with the, um, the agenda. Uh, there are two files that um, I encourage you to look at that will complement my presentation. Uh, one, it's named uh, NIH PGX Resources and Activities. Uh, um, in this file, we'll, you will find a list of resources and others. Um, the NIH, in this case, was an uh, um, institute where uh, asked to indicate which initiative they were funding that were um, involving clinical implementation of pharmacogenomics. And uh, um, maybe there are some um, resources that are missing there because we didn't receive all the answer from our colleagues, but it's a good place to start. Uh, the other file is uh, the file named NIH Grants Over 100K. Uh, in PGen, this is a file that was um, that includes 160 grants that uh, are above 100k, and was obtained by querying the NIH reported database, um, and uh, that included pharmacogenomics or pharmacogenetics uh, in the abstract or title, and then were uh, selected for grants that had included clinical implementation-based titles. With this, I would like to start my um, um, sur uh, survey of the uh, pharmacogenomic at the NIH. Uh, um, to get to this point, uh, uh, what we decided in December last year was to convey a meeting of NIH IC to get together and uh, uh, talk about what the NIH is funding in this field. It was organized by um, uh, some of my colleagues and I, and 12 representatives came uh, to present their IC involvement in PGX research. And the goal of that meeting was really to survey the landscape uh, um, of NIH-funded PGX research to help coordinate the efforts across the NIH, but also to inform this meeting. We collected um, several information which included resources developed, programs, consortia efforts, and award mechanism. Um, I will go briefly go over the resources, some of the clinical trial network efforts, and then I will spend a couple of slides on the outcome, on the discussion that we had. Uh, some of these resources, I'm sure the audience know about it, so I will really go briefly over it, um, just to put the context of this meeting. Uh, NCBI um, supports four main resources, GTR, the Genomic Test Registry, which in, is a registry of available genetic testing. Right now there are more than 5,000 tests available. CLIMVAR, which is a database of clinical significance of genomic sequence variation and their relationship to phenotype. MedGen, which is a phenotype resource for information on condition with the genetic component. And then medical genetic summaries, which are structured reviews about genetic variants and drug responses. And these are really well tied with the GTR and MedGen. Uh, NHGRI also supports some resources in the field of pharmacogenomics. Uh, the Ignite Spark 2, for example, is one of them. Here, this is uh, um, um, covered and uh, updated by the Ignite Consortium. Uh, and the goal is to help clinicians to incorporate genomic into practice and also to help a researcher to study uh, the best way to include the genomics into healthcare and uh, um, in addition to uh, educators to provide genomic training to future um, healthcare providers. NHGRI supports also Phoenix, which is a, 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 a web-based tool for exploring data for hypothesis generation, especially around drug response implication of genomic variants across um, the eMERGE PGX cohort. Um, NIDDK um, um, supports the Type 2 uh, Diabetes Knowledge Portal, which is, was developed as part of Accelerating Medicine Partnership, uh, which is a public-private partnership between NIH, FDA, 10 bio, uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies, and uh, a nonprofit organization, and is managed through the foundation of the NIH. And the goal is to increase the number of new diagnostic tests and therapy for patients while reducing the cost and time for developing them. Um, NIGMS also supports a bunch of uh, uh, resources in this area. Um, 
you all know about CPIC, which is also funded by NHRI, um, Farm GKB. They also support the uh, PGX uh, um, um, IPS cell library and services, which is a, a first resource of this kind that helps members of the PGRN to um, uh, basically access and contribute towards uh, uh, the IPS cell library for pharmacogenomics research. They also support the functionalization of variants in clinical actionable pharmacogene resource and the PMT resource, which is, uh, uh, has the goal to understand the genetic basis of variant in responses to drugs that interact with member transporters. Let's move on to the clinical trials. Uh, some of the clinical trials uh, are uh, mainly supported by, by uh, NCI. NCI has awarded 16 grants with PGX-related aims uh, that identify markers predictive of treatment response and ADR. And most of these grants are related to somatic variation rather than germline variations and drug response. Um, one of the, the trials is called the Alchemist trial and it's a phase three uh, clinical trial for uh, early stage lung cancer patient who have uh, received surgery followed by chemotherapy. And the goal is to evaluate if addition of a target therapy based on patient tumor genetic would help prevent the cancer from returning as well as increase their overall survival. Lung map, it's another trial. It's a phase two, phase three trial uh, for patient with advanced squamous cell lung cancer. Uh, that has responded to, has not responded to, or um, stopped responding to the standard of care. And patients are assigned to new treatment that is best matched to their tumor genetics profile, if that's available. NCI MATCH is another uh, clinical trial uh, that analyzes patient tumors, determining uh, whether they contain any gene abnormalities for which a target therapy is available and assign that uh, if it's available. The trial has 24 treatment arms so far and 17 agents. Supported by NIMH, there are two clinical trials. Uh, one is uh, uh, focusing on the mood uh, stabilizer response in uh, bipolar disorders, and another one on the neurobiology of treatment response in major depress depress de depressive disorders. In terms of research effort, uh, we have NIDDK, for example, that has, uh, um, is supporting drug-induced liver injury network. This is an effort that uh, um, has the goal of creating a registry of these cases and to identify clinical immuno immunological and environmental risk factors for drug and CNM-mediated hepatotoxicity. Uh, GMS, um, NIGMS, uh, primarily, but um, um, it, a, lot, a lot of other IC are contributing to this. It's to support in PGRN, and I'm sure you know all about this resource. Um, but also the OD at the NIH is uh, supporting two, uh, two initiatives. We have the Precision Medicine Initiative, which hosts the All of Us Research Program, which is a, a, a landmark longitudinal research effort that aims to engage uh, one million or more U.S. participants to improve the ability to prevent and treat diseases based on individual differences. And all of us gathers information on medication through the EHR data and the participant provided information. And they are still uh, developing their genomic roadmap and plans. But also we have the NIH uh, Clinical Center, which has a PGX subcommittee that makes recommendations for clinical implementation uh, that are submitted for approval to the Pharmacy or Therapeutics Committee. And uh, uh, their division, uh, their decision to implement a test, it's really based on CPIC guidelines. Uh, more efforts supported by NHGRI are the IGNITE program, um, which has the goal of sharing and disseminate data from multiple sites, uh, implementing PGX testing to contribute to the evidence base of metrics and health-related outcomes gained from um, using PGX information in clinical care. We also support uh, CleanGen, PGX uh, working group, uh, which uh, has the goal of evaluating and annotating genes in the field of pharmacogenomics and develop systematic methods for representing and depositing knowledge into CleanVar and reconcile nomenclature for pharmacogenomic variants. 
the PGX working group has proposed four categories of PGX variant to facilitate the reconciliation of PGX nomenclature. Um, last, we support the uh, Emerge PGX project, um, which had the goal of validate actionable variant in, in a clear certified environment and to integrate PGX variant into the EHR for using clinical treatment. This group uh, recruited more than 9,000 patients and in, in over three years. Now, uh, I will briefly um, summarize the challenges and that we identify and potential synergies and collaboration that uh, we came out from uh, um, that meeting. Uh, first of all, a major issue to identify is uh, the standardization of PGX uh, nomenclature and drug metabolism phenotypes across all data type and resources. Specifically, uh, we felt that the allylic uh, um, nomenclature across data sets, it's really not standardized. And there is disagreement on defining drug metabolism phenotype, for example, ultra metabolizers, poor metabolizer, and so forth. And association are very often gene by gene specific or uh, disease uh, um, uh, specific. Um, the other thing that we came across was that there are a number of existing PGX resources available to the community, uh, and there is concern that many of the aspects of each resource are being really maybe duplicated in the effort to enhance the PGX in, um, knowledge for the scientific community. And so um, by um, definitely um, reducing in unproductive duplication overlap uh, would be definitely something that we need to uh, focus on. Also, uh, Also, uh, another um, aspect that we discussed was that, um, as in many other genomic programs, uh, population diversity remains a challenge. And uh, uh, representation of non-European population is not as balanced as uh, we would like to be and uh, adequate. And, and there is really um, a need to move away from um, the five overarching census-defined USA population groups that um, we use it right now. Another um, aspect was the adverse drug reactions that we felt it was uh, it's uh, very often um, not adequately studied. And uh, there are only uh, small sample sizes studies and therefore not established predictor of responses or not enough evidence of uh, irritability uh, of drug response. And also, we discussed briefly how epigenetics changes uh, affected by drugs uh, are another knowledge gap that we might need to tackle. Last, um, we felt that effectiveness of preemptive genotypes should be assessed PGX-wide rather than gene by gene, as I mentioned before, or disease by disease. Also, uh, we need tests that have been really prove uh, uh, reliable from an analytical standpoint and clinical valid that are low cost and can be incorporated, as Dan was saying, um, in routine medical care in which the turnaround time is proven to be fast. And we felt that preemptive testing uh, might be really the answer and might represent the low hanging fruit for PGX. Another aspect is the possibility of engaging payers for reimbursement, uh, at, which needs really uh, consideration. However, this might be a challenge because of the evidence that they might need to, to do what we need them to do. So um, another aspect that we um, observed that we felt was uh, um, interesting to point out is um, uh, that translating PGX data into cancer treatment and precision oncology um, presents a challenge. Uh, this is based, uh, mainly due to the fact that by the time we, uh, we have a test available for a drug that is uh, um, treating a tumor, that drug is already obsolete. So the need of maybe um, come up with a um, companion diagnostic um, will be probably the answer to this uh, challenge that is presented in cancer. Uh, immunotherapy has been uh, um, uh, discuss was discussed 
to, especially in the context of cancer, because it's, it's the next thing that they are, um, the, that the field is doing. Uh, however, we felt that immunopharmacology should be really explored beyond cancer and, and uh, um, infectious diseases. Uh, also, uh, a major issue, which is especially in, um, evident in psychiatry, is the lack of biological markers. And defining psychiatric phenotype is particularly challenging and essential uh, to measuring uh, uh, and define response to treatment. So many studies are, in, in psychiatry especially, um, are done on candidate gene and cannot be replicated in large cohorts. And uh, the um, basically um, uh, getting sufficient number of participants is a challenge, and uh, especially for study replication. Um, what we felt was that basically collecting data from, from the EHR might be the answer to this challenge. Lastly, NIH uh, um, IC colleagues felt that we really need to collaborate more and uh, uh, on several levels. Uh, uh, first of all, the first step uh, could be really to um, um, look at the different uh, um, project in clinical implementation and uh, um, identify those that we could call them uh, gold standards, um, examples for the community to, to look at. Uh, also, it's important that we keep on sharing samples and databases, especially because many times an institute is focusing on their own disease but collecting information that might be relevant for other ICs. And also, it's important that uh, um, we keep an eye on uh, um, um, collaborating on animal and IPS cells model for toxicology studies and epi or genomics studies of drug response. With this, I would like to say thank you to my colleagues. These are the uh, NIH um, IC that participated in this uh, one-day meeting um, for coming and for sharing the information. And uh, in addition, we want to say thank you to Melpi, who helped me organize that meeting, summarize that meeting, and uh, um, getting this presentation done. And with this, I open the, um, the floor for discussion. Great. Thank you very much, Simona. That was a, a whirlwind tour through what's going on in, in NIH pharmacogenomics. And I, I would remind everyone that, uh, that we will be um, making slides available to everyone uh, in, the, in the conference as well as eventually on our, on our website. Um, Howard Jacobs is going to take over the discussion shortly, but if there are, are specific questions for Simona first, uh, we can certainly entertain those. Yes. Howard. Simona, do you, do you have a, a glimpse into what other members of DHHS are, are doing uh, in, in terms of, I know FDA has uh, some research going on in pharmacogenomics and a lot of activity in that area, of obviously non-research. You know, Mary in her introductory slides talked about um, taking out the R word. She didn't say it that way, but basically at some point removing the word research and just implementing. And so CMS at least really should be uh, somewhat interested. Um, and there's other components. So any, any glimpse there? Yeah, VA. V, well, VA, yeah, VA, of course. Yeah, thank you. Um, no, I, I didn't survey the landscape of uh, the entire HHS, but definitely something that we might want to do and see what other big programs are funded from HHS. And I know, as you said, that FDA has started some of the uh, initiative in this, uh, in this area. Mike. Uh, how about antihypertensive pharmacogenomics? I didn't notice on your list, but I would suggest, like you, you kindly mentioned, oncology, immunotherapy, psychiatry. But I th I'm just curious, there is no activity in, in antihypertensive pharmacogenomics. It's a huge problem. You know, almost half of the population suffers from hypertension, and we, we actually don't know how many do not respond excluding those who do not adhere to, to, to them. But I think it's not a low-hanging fruit, but I think it's extremely important for the population. There's no activity currently? Uh, not that I heard, but maybe. Yeah, so we were funded for 12 years and can 
including our no-cost extension and PGRN. Um, and so, I mean, we've done a lot of work and we've published, I think, 55 original papers from PEAR um, on hypertension pharmacogenomics. The challenge probably is not that dissimilar from the challenge in hypertension as a disease, which is there um, are, unlike sort of the drug metabolism pharmacogenomics, there are many, many um, sort of smaller influence variants. And so, I mean, we're working really to try to figure out if we can sort of put those together and collectively uh, they are predictive enough, but um, it, it's, it's not as straightforward. It's a common complex disease and the drug response um, follows that common complex disease nature because we really don't have strong um, variants on the pharmacokinetic side for the antihypertensive drugs.